Hello everyone and welcome to the 14th Cocoa Programming Tutorial. In this tutorial we're continuing where we left off on lesson 13 and we're just continuing with our NS table view topic. So basically in the last tutorial I just covered how NS table views kind of work. They don't store their own data, they ask another object for their data, and basically what we did was just created uh, our person object or our person class which contains both a name and an age and that's what we're going to be putting as data into our NS table view and then of course we have our table view controller which houses the mutable array which is all of our data and then there's um, an IB outlet to the table view so that's pretty much all we worked on last time so what we're working on this time is how we're going to get our table view to um, basically talk to our controller and then our controller uh, can respond in whatever way it needs to to display the data back to the NS table view. So that's what we're going to be doing in this tutorial. So uh, to start out here I'm going to try to uh, just set up this add button so that we can add new objects to our NS mutable array. So all we have to do for this of course is just add a new um, button or a new not button, new action here, IB action, and then we'll call it add ID sender, and that's going to be our method for that. And then we'll just um, copy and paste this, and we'll paste it in here, and then let's just implement this. So basically, we know that our add method is going to be adding new. Uh, people or new person objects into our MS mutable array. So to, to actually be able to create a new person or know its methods, we need to import our person class. So just to say import person.h. And now what we want to do is we want to be able to add these people to our NS mutable array. And again our NS mutable, mutable array is called list. So all we have to do is say list add object and then we can say person alloc and init. So now all we're doing is uh, creating a new person class every time or new person object and we're adding it into our NS mutable array every time we click add. So let's go ahead and set this stuff up that we have for our table view. We're just going to set up our table view and this uh, action method that we just made. So to do this, of course, we need to add a new object to the workbench. So just drag out an NS object. And now we can change the class that we're working with to be our table view controller. So now we can right click our table view or go up to the connector inspector, connection inspector. And uh, anyway, so if you right click it, we get this. And we can attach our table view outlet to our table view and we can attach our add method to our add button. So now that we have those, we have uh, the two things that we wanted to set up already made. And now uh, let's just discuss how this is going to go down from here. So let's resort back to the little picture that I made and just recall that NS table view doesn't store its own data so what we have to do is get NS table view to ask another object which in this case is going to be our table view controller and we have to be able to respond to what it's asking for. And how we do this is we have to conform to a certain protocol. And if you're watching the Objective-C tutorials, you already know uh, what this means. And again, if you haven't, probably should check them out. So anyway, we as a table view controller are going to say that we're going to uh, we're going to conform to the NS table view data source protocol. And that means we're going to have some methods that we have to implement and uh, we're going to be able to respond when the table view asks us for certain information. So what we have to do for this is we have to say well our table view class is uh, going to be our table view controller class is going to be responding to NS table view data source. So that means that we're going to implement a few methods that uh, are going to be necessary for our program. And the two methods that we're going to need from the NS table view data source protocol, although there are more, is that uh, the two methods are the first one is number of rows in table view, which simply returns the number of rows that our table view is going to need to display. So this will just return an int, and uh, we just have to tell it, hey, you know, we need to display this many person objects. And so we can do that by just 
returning the number of objects we have in our array. So that's pretty simple. And then the second method that we're going to implement is table view object value for table column row. And this is actually uh, to actually get the objects. This will return ID, which means it will return the objects that it needs to fill in all of the information in our table, uh, our NS table view. So we'll get into all of these, but uh, let's start off with the easy one. So basically, again, the method that we need to implement is number of rows in table column. So this will return actually an NS integer, and I'll talk about that in a bit. But the method is number of rows in table column, or table view rather. So anyway, this, uh, you're probably wondering what NS integer is, and for our sakes, uh, just remember it as a normal int, like so. And all NS integer actually is, <clears throat> it's not actually a type, it's not actually a class that Apple made like NS number is. NS integer is actually just a type def int, like this kind of int. So um, all it means is that Apple made it specific for different environments, whether you're in 32-bit or 64-bit, but we really don't have to worry about this. All we have to know is that NS integer is an int, and we're going to be returning just some number. So that's all you have to know about NS integer. It's just a normal int, basically. So of course, if we're going to be doing this, we have to have a way that we're going to be returning the number of elements, or the number of rows, technically in this case, that we want to display. And the number of rows represents the number of objects that we have in our um, in our list, or our NS mutable array. So it's all the, the people objects, so all we have to say is list count. And of course, we have to return this value. So all we have to say is return and list count. So there we go. Uh, that's all, and it, that's all that method needs to know. It just needs to know the number of objects it's going to display, and that fulfills that requirement. Uh, we're just returning the number of objects that we have in our NS mutable array. So now, when our table view goes to ask our controller for this, uh, it'll know what it's looking for. So now, the second part is the more difficult method, which is table view object value for table column row. So it's a rather long method, but um, I'm sure it's all right. So basically, uh, it looks like this, table view, and it's this crazy long method, which um, we're going to have spanning a few lines here, but uh, it's crazy long method, table view, object value for table column, row. So basically, um, what this method is, to break it down, is it's basically saying, well, this is the table view uh, that we're associated with, but the important parts is this, um, it's going to be returning the table column, or not returning, it's going to be passing in the table column and the row that it's on. So basically what this method is asking for is the individual elements that um, we're going to have for each row and column. So it's going to say, well, you know, right now I want you to give me the element on the second row and the second column. So then we're responsible in this method for returning the object that it's looking for. So uh, we have to do a few things though before we do this, so let's hop back into our main menu.zip file and we have to uh, just kind of name our columns uh, actually with a spe special identifier. So what we do for this is we just click once, click twice, click three times, and then you have the column selected. So what this allows us to do is edit something called the identifier of that column. And the identifier is basically something that is simply an NS string that uh, identifies what the column is displaying. So in this identifier called name, we just want to return, uh, or we want, we're looking for the information of the name. And this is actually going to be important for uh, key value coding later, so make sure you uh, identify it with a lowercase n. And that means the reason we're doing this is because we're actually going to be taking the objects out of our person class and we want to be able to get these objects that are in the person class. So we're calling them basically whatever these properties are, are of those variables. So uh, once again, we have our name here that we've selected, and that's the identifier now for our name column. And the next thing we want is an identifier for the age column, and that's just going to be age, like so. So now that we have that, we have uh, all those things selected. So now both columns have a special identifier and all this is is a string representing the data basically that we want and so we represent this by name and age. So this will make more sense when we actually get into the coding part or why we're doing this. 
So let's just hop back into our table view controller. So like I said before, what we're trying to do here is return the specific object for that row and that column, and we're just responsible for returning whatever we need to. So in order to do this, we just have to uh, figure out what we need to take from our NS mutable array, because again, that's where all of this data is stored. So the first step here is to get the object at that given row, because um, since this method it passes in the row that it's looking at so we just want to get that object which is the person at that row and that's just the index in our NS mutable array so all we have to say is person person uh, we'll just call it P for this and we just all we want to do is take this person object out of our array so we'll just say list object at index row so again, the row just corresponds with the index in our NS mutable array. So if we're on the zeroth row in our table column, that's like the first row, and then uh, it'll just access the zeroth index, which will return whatever person object is at the zeroth index. So then, once we have that person, now we have to address uh, what we're looking for for the table column, because again, we could be in the first column, which is the name, or the second, which is the age. So we have to get the proper value of what we're looking for. So to do this, all we have to do is get that identifier string that um, we were talking about earlier. So to do this, we just create a new NS string, and we'll just call it identifier. And the identifier, and again, make sure that you notice this, our uh, method here passes in a table column. And NS table column is actually an object, so it's not just an integer. So what this means is that uh, our table column will actually have a um, it'll have an identifier in every table column. So that's why we set the identifier in our uh, nib file so that when we do this, we can say table column like so, and we can say identifier. And what this is doing is we'll get the identifier that we applied to whatever table column we're looking at. So if we're looking at the second table column. Uh, it'll be passing in that table column, and when we say table column identifier, we're getting the identifier with that table column, and if we're in the second column, we're talking about the age. So basically, with that, we're going to be getting the identifier of whatever it's looking at, and um, so now we have either name or age as our identifier. So now this is where the key value coding comes in, where we can return a specific value for that object. So all we have to say is return and this is where the key value coding comes in we want to say p value for key and again this is how key value coding works it looks at the key that we're looking at which is basically a property name so uh, we're going to just pass in the identifier so again since the identifier is just the key and key value coding looks at basically the properties of whatever object it's looking for so for example here, if the identifier had the identifier of name, because again our table columns can either have name or age, so if it's looking for the value of name, it'll look into the P object, which is a person, and if the identifier or the value or the key I should say is name, then it's going to be accessing whatever value is in our name, or our name object, or our um, name property, it'll be using the name property but accessing the object. So with that said, uh, it's basically all it's really doing is it's just getting the value for whatever, either the name or the age, it'll return this value that's in our person object, and that's all this method does. So pretty simple, uh, there's not too much there as long as you know how key value coding works, and um, that's how it works. So again, this method is just returning the specific object for a certain row, which we're getting right here, we're identifying the object at that row, and then it just wants to get uh, which specific column it's talking about, so either the name column or the age column, and that will be saved as a, and a string identifier, and then we can use key value coding to get that object. So now that we have all that set up, there's a few last things we need to do here though. Um, we basically what we've set up is um, what our NS table view, when we connect our NS table view to our controller, now it can you know call or ask us for all these uh, implementations, but we have to be able to say to our NS table view where it's looking for this data. So uh, to do that, we just have to click once. Again, this is accessing the scroll uh, NS scroll view. 
click again and that will access the NS table view. So click it twice and that will give you the NS table view. And then you can right click on this object or go up to the connections inspector. And then all you want to do is find the data source which is right here and connect that to our controller. And there you go, you've pretty much implemented everything that we need. So what we've done again is we've we now are telling our NS table view, hey, when you're looking for your data, it's all in the table view controller. And so when it's looking for this data, it's going to be calling these two methods that we have here, number of rows and table view, and the crazy long one that I don't care to say. So basically, now that we've implemented how both these methods work, it will know exactly what data to fill in because we're, we're returning the data that it needs. So that's that. And uh, the last final thing that we need to do for this, though, is kind of a little separate. But every time we're adding a new object to our NS mutable array, our NS table view is not uh, notified of this. So we can add as many objects to we want, or as many objects to the mutable array as we want, but the table view will never be aware of this unless we tell it that. So to notify the table view that we've uh, made some changes to our mutable array, we can say in our add method, table view reload data. And that will just notify the table view, hey, we've added new objects to our NS mutable array. Uh, you're, you know, you probably want to implement these methods again so you can check to make sure uh, that you have everything. So that's all that reload data does, and now we should have everything that we needed linked up. So let's go ahead and run this. And once it compiles, we should get some results. And here's our application with our nice little categories, and we can rearrange these as we please. And then you can see we can add data by just hitting the Add button. So there's a few things you'll notice at this. We get all of the default values, but uh, when we go to change anything, we're not going to be able to change it. And we can't remove anything either because we haven't implemented that as well. So anyway, we've implemented how to add new objects to our NS table view and how our NS table view can look at our controller and say, hey, I need this information. Again, this is all done by us saying that we're going to implement NS table view data source. And that is where, that's the protocol, or the, pro not, yes, the protocol rather, uh, where all these methods are declared. So anyway, we're just responsible for returning the data that our NS table view asks for, and that's pretty much how it works. So anyway, if you have any questions on this, uh, feel free to leave your questions in the comments below, and make sure you check out the uh, key value coding tutorials again if you haven't already, because that's uh, what we're using in this tutorial. So anyway, I hope you understood it. Again, questions in the comments, please subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you next tutorial.